the start of January, I made a video about my winter writing routine. Now at the time, that routine was working really well for me. I'd been using it since just before the start of November and NaNoWriMo, and I felt like it was really helping me to get things done. My writing was going really well. But you know, life at the moment is very changeable, and I think a lot of people found that in 2020. It could be your school, your job, your health, your caring responsibilities. It could even be a global pandemic. In my case, my two and a half year old daughter stopped taking afternoon naps. That doesn't sound like a very big thing, but those naps were a huge part of my writing routine. And when she stopped taking them, a lot of that routine fell apart. So what do you do when your carefully crafted routine does fall apart? Today, I want to talk about the things I've done to try and fix it. And hopefully, if you're in the same situation, there'll be some tips in there for you too. The first step for me was just to acknowledge that things had changed. To be honest, I really wanted to fight it for a while. I was so used to getting that afternoon nap time in which to work that I wanted to cling to it for as long as possible. Sometimes change is just temporary and you can go back to the way things were before. Sometimes it's not though. That can be both a good thing and a bad thing. A single change to your routine may feel like it's throwing your entire life into chaos, but sometimes it's exactly what you need. The second acknowledgement for me was that not everything was going to get done. Now this was really hard. I love making my weekly to-do lists and I very much like ticking everything off by the end of Sunday. But losing that period of afternoon work time, which could be a couple of hours every single day, made a huge difference to what I can get done in a week. Accepting that I was going to have to change how much I planned to do in a week, because otherwise not everything was going to happen, was integral to me moving ahead and finding a new routine. The next big step was definitely to prioritise. As I said, I have a pretty full to-do list every week. I do always try to focus on the things that are going to make the most difference to my writing business. Now, of course, usually that is writing and editing. I don't have a business at all if I don't produce more books. But I've noticed over time that other things always creep in. No matter how I try to simplify things, I end up thinking of all these other things that could be really beneficial to my business and week by week, more and more of them appear on my to-do list. But when your routine does change, this is the perfect time to drop everything that is non-essential. For me, the really big one here was cutting back on social media. I'd been pretty active on Instagram for several months and I really like Instagram. I like the writing community there and I love taking photos. But when it came to a choice between Instagram and writing, Instagram had to go. But even with prioritizing, I was still making weekly to-do lists. These really are the easiest way for me to focus on what I need to get done and to keep track of how much I've already done. The key thing for me then was to approach my to-do lists flexibly. In my winter writing routine video, I talked about how I was editing in the mornings, using the afternoons for a little bit more editing and then marketing work, and I was drafting in the evenings. This worked really well. I would have liked to have stuck to it for much longer, but the last few weeks for me have been all about embracing flexibility. Some days I am able to get up, look at my to-do list and work through things in exactly the order I would choose, but some days just don't work out like that. Being flexible for me means looking at the time that is available to me, even if it's just 10 minutes, grabbing my bullet journal, picking something off the to-do list and working out what I can do in the time I have. Maybe in those 10 minutes, all I can do is 
tweak a couple of Amazon ads. But if that means something ticked off, that is perfect. It's one less thing to worry about and I have made the most of every spare minute. Next up, we have managing your energy as well as your time. Time is not our only finite resource. Energy is definitely up there too. We can't just work all the time and upheaval can really kill your reserves of energy. It takes a lot of energy to get used to new circumstances. So working with my energy has been a really big part of any new routines I've made over the last couple of years. I have had to teach myself to be kind to myself, which honestly does not come easily to me. I can be a bit of a workaholic and I have a tendency to just try and push through health conditions. There are definitely days when my energy is lower and the best thing for me to do is to just pick low intensity tasks to fit my energy and my mood. I have to then trust that I will have the time and energy to work on the bigger tasks further down the line. And usually I do have, but only because I was kind to myself in the first place. And also key to this is proper self-care. Now, I can be a little bit scathing of the very consumerist self-care industry that has grown up on social media over the last few years. But I do believe in the fundamentals of self-care. Getting enough sleep, eating properly and having a good diet, getting plenty of exercise, and doing whatever is most important to you to maintain your mental health. These are absolutely key to being healthy and happy. And no matter how much your routine has changed, you should never skimp on them. Again, I am telling myself this as much as you because it hasn't always been something I've been good at. But working on my self-care has made a huge difference to how much I've been able to get done and how good I feel when I finished. So with all of these different aspects worked on, it's then time to start building new routines. This for me is often a very slow process. Sometimes it does involve keeping the things that worked before. In my case, I am still trying to work on the most important task first thing every morning, and I am still drafting in the evenings. You should never be afraid to drop the things that weren't terribly successful though. If your routine has been forced to change, this is a really good time to look critically at what you were doing before and what you need to take forward. And it's a great time to keep experimenting. There is no need to instantly pick a new routine and stick rigidly to it. You can be flexible. You can try new things. You can particularly try things that you'd never considered before or always thought wouldn't work for you, just in case. The key thing here is not to panic if things don't go to plan. Maybe your life circumstances keep changing or maybe you just really struggle to get a new routine off the ground. Neither of these things are reasons to stop trying though. Whether life becomes instantly simpler or not, you will eventually adopt routines and you may not even realize you're doing it. So keep trying, keep working on those new routines and keep evaluating what's working and what isn't. Not only will that help you get your working life back on track, but the next time you do have to go through an upheaval, you will be much better equipped to, if you have to, start all over again. So that is how I have been changing up my routines over the last few weeks. This is a constant process, it's not finished, to be honest, it's never finished. No matter how settled you think you are, something can always come along to change it. But I hope some of these tips will be useful for you in dealing with changes in your own life. And if you have any more to share, I would love it if you left them down in the comments. I have been surprising myself recently with how much I have still been able to get done even when my routines have definitely fallen apart. So I am going to keep working on them and I'm definitely going to keep writing. I hope you will too, and I'll see you next time.